The recorder uses these which are AEG hubs. You can get it in different styles, Cine or NAB. These are called pancakes uh, for using with different style, um, well for just using with um, root tape without any flanges on it. And the centres are interchangeable so that you could put in a different style centre. You can put 10.5 inch reels on here, you can go all the way up to 12 inch reels on the machine like this. As you can see inside here we've got a regulator circuit got a uh, an erased BIOS oscillator circuit. Uh, the erased heads and the record heads go through this box. A transformer changing voltages. And at the back we've got two record amplifiers and then one either side replay amplifiers. We have a large selection of relays and capacitors here which is the main logic machine of the machine. So other features are such like this light bulb this light bulb is used as a ballast so when the recorder is in play mode it puts the ballast load on the take up reel the tape recorder has an early style of feedback control we have a set of rollers on the top of the machine which operate this controller here which sends back different voltages back to the, re back to the logic if you press play it then settles the reel down uh, giving an adequate amount of back tape tension so that the tension isn't too high when the tape gets to the end as the left hand reel empties if the tension is too high you get lag on the tape and the worm flutter goes up so the idea behind these electronics is to stop that from happening it also keeps an eye on tensions when you're winding and fast forwarding The recorder tries to reduce the lag on the tape down as much as possible. This here, this flywheel which is now locked in place, um, only operates once the machine is put into play mode and now it turns. This gives the tape a weighted effect, uh, thus trying to bring down the worm flutter. If I press stop and then fast forward, it doesn't spin, it's completely disengaged. Not until it goes back into play mode does it drop back into place. The relay system on this is more complicated than the average tape recorder. Uh, you've got um, several different types of uh, mechanical functions that go on the top of the machine. Uh, many solenoids that are operated. You've got touch sensitives on the speed control to rewind and fast forward. Uh, you've got a certain sort of locking mechanism to stop uh, accidental speed change whilst doing recording or machine being shut down. A lot of safety features went into keeping the tape accurately recorded on this machine. This machine is unusual as it has a motorised splicing device. Using the control keys on the top of the machine you can operate a pair of scissors to cut the tape. Most machines either have this done mechanically by a press of a button which would remove scissors or the tape was taken away from the head and spliced by a blade. The capstan motors on these machines are huge and very heavy. Uh, they make, um, this is to try and reduce the effect of whirl and flutter. Uh, the the bigger the motor, the less kind of torque you'll get. Um, the clever feature of this machine is the fusing system. If a fuse should blow, instead of hunting around to find out which fuse has blown, on the top of each fuse cover there is a light, and once the fuse is gone, the light lights up. So if we turn the machine off, take that out and put in a new fuse, turn the machine back on again, the light goes out. What is electronics are modular? The idea is for quick release. So you press two buttons and undo three cables and that unit would be out. You would then be able to put in a second unit and the machine would carry on functioning. The idea is to limit the amount of time the machine is down and not working. Uh, the fault unit could then be taken off and sent to the engineer's room where he could take repair it. Um, with no worry on how long the machine would not be in operation. The machine is designed for quick surfacing. The heads tend to need to be cleaned quite regularly, um, but if the heads need to be taken off, 
there is a key inside which allows you to undo three bolts which hold the heads in place. The idea then is, is that another set of heads could just be punked, put straight in over the top of the old ones and the machine would be up and running again straight away. The, the amount of time so that this has to happen is probably very low because it's one of the only parts that takes any time to remove that would need servicing. These large piano key controls were often broken. Um, on this particular machine it looks like at least six of the control button, buttons have been replaced and there are not uh, the original ones that came with the machine when it was first built. The problem is with them is that uh, the plastic is very brittle. This tape recorder has a two tier speed control for fast forward and rewind. The idea is that you can either wind slowly for archiving or for um, searching on the tape or you can wind quickly. This is done by pressing the button lightly. When you press the button fully, it illuminates and goes into high speed. The same in the opposite direction. As mentioned before, there is a little um, hole here, and this is for the tape splicer. If you press up the um, safety, press that, you'll see a pair of scissors come out, and they would cut the tape. Like most of the Studer range, um, the heads are open, as you can see here. But one of the problems with this is that you can pick up mains hum. The machine has a control here that you can adjust up, which moves this part into place, which is the hum shield. The other thing it's got is when you're doing speed, uh, fast winding or rewinding, you've got this control here. In this instance it's removing the tape away from the heads, but in, in spool mode it puts the tape onto the heads. 